following is an orientation to the Canyon's Teacher Effectiveness Support System, or CTES. CTES has been approved and authorized by the Utah State Board of Education as a valid and reliable tool for evaluating teachers in Canyon School District. CTES is founded upon the Utah Effective Teaching Standards and the Canyon School District's Multi-Tiered System of Support, or MTSS, framework. The MTSS framework aligns with all state standards. By state law, every educator must be evaluated every year using a reliable and valid evaluation instrument consistent with Utah Effective Teaching Standards. Law also states that administrators must address the needs of educators whose performance does not meet the effective or highly effective rating or expectation. Newly hired licensed employees are provisional with the district for three years. A district employee who accepts another position that is substantially different from the position in which career status was achieved, for example, a teacher who accepts a position as a teacher specialist, is returned to provisional status in the new position for three years. A mentor will be assigned to all provisional educators. Provisional and probationary educators will be evaluated yearly. An Instructional Quality Rating, or IQR, will be assigned at the mid-year conference, with a Summative Overall Rating, or SOR, being assigned in the spring. Career educators will be evaluated using one of three phases. Phases 1 and 2 are growth years, and Phase 3 is the summative year. CTES is a comprehensive process designed to support professional growth and excellence of educators. CTES strives to improve student outcomes by helping educators identify areas of strength and growth in the context of research-validated practices through meaningful feedback, team collaboration, professional learning, and ongoing coaching. The many purposes of CTES include ensuring that every student receives high-quality instruction every day, developing and supporting effective and highly effective educators, developing a collaborative professional culture to facilitate student learning, recognizing and promoting the use of evidence-based instructional priorities, standards-based teaching and reporting, and professional behaviors, appraising educators according to their effectiveness, and providing a basis for decisions affecting employment. The district standards have been divided into four domains, planning, instructing, adjusting, and reflecting, all of which align with Canyon School District's MTSS framework. CTES has three components based on state law. The instructional quality rating, making up 70% of the final rating, that includes self-assessment and goal setting, IPOPs, checklists, educator portfolio, and administrator knowledge, a student growth reflection, making up 20%, and the stakeholder input reflection, making up 10%. These three components combine into a summative overall rating. CTES ratings are highly effective, indicating an educator who has excelled. Effective, indicating an educator whose performance has met the standard. Emerging effective, indicating a provisional educator whose performance is minimally effective. Minimally effective, indicating a career educator whose performance has not met the standard for successful teaching. And not effective, indicating an educator whose performance has not met the standard for successful teaching. Provisional educators' requirements are summarized on the Provisional Educator Growth Cycle Sheet for years 1, 2, and 3. For cycle 1 of the first provisional year, educators will attend the Canyons Teacher Support Academy in the fall to learn about CTES requirements. Formal IPOPs will also be completed prior to November 30th to provide the new teacher with timely feedback on their practice. Completion of the academy will prepare the provisional teachers to complete all the CTES requirements for year 1 by March 30th. The provisional educator will then proceed with the growth cycle as outlined. If a provisional educator's instructional quality rating, or IQR, or summative overall rating, SOR, is not effective, the educator will receive Tier 2 supports, a memo of concern with identified assistance, and will be notified that their employment with the district is in question. If the provisional educator's IQR, or SOR, is minimally effective, effective, or highly effective, 
the provisional educator advances to the next CTES cycle. Once a provisional educator has successfully completed year three requirements, the educator attains career status and advances to phase one of the career educator growth cycle. The career educator's growth cycle sheet summarizes the requirements for phases one, two, and three. Please note, the summative overall rating received during phase three, or year three of the growth cycle, will be retained during phases one and two. Phases one and two are growth years which require self-assessment and goal setting, one observation, and a response to student growth. If a career educator's instructional quality rating or summative overall rating is minimally effective or not effective, the educator will receive Tier 2 supports, a plan of assistance, which may not exceed 120 school days, and will be notified that employment with the district is in question. It is the educator's responsibility to improve performance to satisfactory levels. Cycle 1 is then repeated. If the career educator's second IQR is effective or highly effective, the educator is in advance to phase one, removed from probation, and career status is reinstated. Please note, career educators who have been placed on probation for unsatisfactory performance and are again unsatisfactory within a three-year period are subject to non-renewal or employment termination pursuant to state law and district policy. If, after the second cycle, the educator's rating is still minimally effective or not effective, the educator then continues the plan of assistance and is placed on probation. If the educator's rating after the third round is still minimally effective or not effective, the educator's employment with the district is terminated. Here is a review of the processes for CTES and what is required for each component. The instructional quality component of CTES consists of several requirements. First is self-assessment and goal setting, also known as the professional growth plan, which correlates with student growth. Each educator must complete a self-assessment and professional growth plan and set goals. The supervisor can then review the self-assessment and professional growth plan and may communicate with each educator about the growth plan in a conference or email. The observation and checklist portions of the IQR include IPOPs in the Meeting Participation and Ethical Conduct Checklists, as well as Administrator Knowledge. IPOPs and checklists can begin 15 calendar days after orientation. Remember, IPOPs are a minimum of 20 minutes. Electronic feedback will be available by midnight on the day following the observation. If not, the observation is void. Only formal IPOPs count toward evaluations. Coaches can and will only do informal IPOPs. And for checklists, these observations can occur during faculty meetings, IPLCs, etc. The Educator Portfolio section of the Instructional Quality Rating includes various lines of evidence that show quality instruction. These lines of evidence include lesson planning, IPLC notes, rubrics, professional development, etc. Career educators in Phase 3 and all provisional educators will receive an instructional quality rating based on classroom observations, checklists, the educator portfolio, and administrator knowledge. Two formal IPOPs must be completed on provisional Year 1 educators by November 30th. The instructional quality rating for Years 2 and 3 provisional educators is due January 30th and the instructional quality rating for year one provisional and phase three career educators is due March 30th. The instructional quality rating is then calculated based upon the effectiveness rating for each standard using the rating decision rubric. The student growth component of CTES consists of a reflection on student growth. For the student growth reflection, all subjects and all grades may be considered. This reflection may become part of the self-assessment and goal setting for the next year. The stakeholder input component of CTES consists of a reflection based on stakeholder feedback. Students and parents will be surveyed in October and November. Educators will reflect on and respond to the stakeholder feedback 
and responses will receive an effectiveness rating. The information from the instructional quality rating, stakeholder input, and student growth are then used to determine a summative overall rating, or SOR. At the end of your conference, educators will meet with their administrator to review the professional growth plan and determine if goals were met. They can also discuss next steps or pre-plan the next year's growth plan. The SOR will be discussed based on the IQR student growth and stakeholder input. And then the administrator must submit the SOR to Human Resources by May 30th. Following the end of your conference, a copy of the SOR will be placed in your personnel file. If desired, you may submit a written response to any or all parts of the evaluation and have that response attached to your evaluation. You have 15 days after receiving the evaluation results to request a review of the evaluation process. There is a unique version of CTES for each specialized subgroup. Building administrators will orient educators in these subgroups, and these systems all include instructional or performance quality, student growth, or stakeholder input. The complete CTES manual, which contains all benchmark criteria, can be found by logging into your Data Dashboard CTES webpage under Resources. If you have any questions regarding this presentation, please feel free to contact your supervisor or Sandra Dahoulihan in Human Resources. Thank you.